As we pour the water for our Advent wreath, we remember our deep thirst for God's love. We long for your love, O oh God. A tsunami wave of love, overpowering, all enveloping, overwhelming, sweeping all up before it and changing the landscape forever. We long for your love, O oh God. Love which has the patience to seep into us, one drop at a time over eons, forming stalagmites of beauty in the darkest of places. We long for your love, O oh God. Love which holds us with the silent, urethral mystery of mist on a mountain top. We long for your love, O oh God. We name some situations where, which are in particular need of God's love at this time. Lord, we pray for people who can't be near loved ones this Christmas, children who feel unloved, those in nursing homes far away from loved ones, people who have lost loved ones this year, and people living with broken relationships with their families. Advent God, we worship you with love. We long for your love, O oh God. Amen. Good morning, Caboolture Congregation. How are you this morning? Welcome to those watching online. I'm Pastor Dave Gregg, and we issue a very warm welcome to our service this morning. Just as warm as the weather. This morning, may we start our service with our call to worship, but I invite each of you to say with me, if you could please. Come upon us here, Holy Spirit. Settle in and speak to us gently as we come to the end of our Advent time, that we have found favour with God and we belong in God's family. Let your spirit, next slide, let your spirit stir in us so that we see the birth of Christ Jesus as an opportunity to rebirth our faith journey. So we come gladly to worship with hope and expectation. Come, let's worship together. We start with our prayer of invocation and thanksgiving, so join me in prayer, please. God, you chose the most improbable way to reveal yourself to the world. We look at Mary and see that with and by your spirit, she accepted the joy and pain of being the God-bearer. Her faith and commitment to you are a bold example to us. Mary's song is one of joy and revolutionary justice. God, we pray that we might be like Mary. With and by your spirit, we could be God-bearers too. Fill our hearts with love and faithfulness Build our confidence in our ability to do your will. May we strive for justice and shine the light of your saving grace into the world. So God of the creative moment, we praise and thank you. You for the gift of peace that comes to us in the stories of Advent and Christmas and in your presence here today. We come before you in humility, acknowledging that your thoughts are far beyond us. Your goodness fills us with awe. We're overwhelmed with wonder that the coming of the Christ child, born in simplicity and couched in fragility, is the means to our salvation and the declaration of your eternal love for us. All glory, honour, praise and thanks be yours, this day and forever. Amen. Our first carol this morning, Angels from the Realms of Glory. I invite you, if you are able, to stand and sing.
what's all this stuff we're singing about angels, praying about angels? So I'm going to have a talk about angels today. The promise, or sorry, the prominence of angels in the Christmas story is obvious. From the cards to the decorations on the tree, we are surrounded by angels. So, what is it with angels? Why don't we see angels anymore? Especially since they figure so prominently in the Christmas story. You know, I think if an angel so described in the Bible came down to see us anymore, we would literally fall out of our chair in stunned surprise. And that's exactly how all the people to whom the angels reacted at first, with shock and fear. The shock and fear was soon transformed into hope and expectation. And that's where I think we discover that we can learn from these Christmas characters. A good clue concerning the important question of what we learn is found in a phrase from a well-known carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. In the first verse we find the phrase, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. There's a lot in that statement, isn't there? And I believe God sent the angels to dispel the fear of the events and announce the hope found lying in a manger in Bethlehem. Now, angels are messengers. That's what the word means. The angels are mentioned in 34 of the 66 books of the Bible. And no, I didn't look through every one, Jason. I looked up Mr. Google. The angels in the Christmas story came to bring a message to others from God. Interestingly enough, the messages were all quite similar and each contained the phrase, don't be afraid. The first encounter with the angel Gabriel comes in Luke 1. There, Gabriel appears to Mary. I guess Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Do you think she'd be sitting there saying, sure, the Lord's with me. I'm a good Jewish girl from a good Jewish home. Nah, not really. More likely she was thinking, who are you and why are you here? Do not be afraid, Gabriel said. Mary wasn't afraid because the angel was there. You know, in the first century, people were more open to understanding and accepting things of supernatural being. No. The words were preparing Mary for what was to follow. The announcement that God was calling her to do something that was completely out of the ordinary. Something that would derail her life, possibly create a scandal, and possibly leave her homeless and destitute. What does that tell us? Don't be afraid when God calls you out of the ordinariness of your life. Don't be afraid for God to choose you to do something great for your community. That's why what Gabriel told Mary, you have found favour with God. You have found favour or you have found grace. Mary became an instrument of grace. You know, Mary couldn't have been an instrument of grace until she had experienced God's grace herself. The angel's announcement was one of grace. Why? Because grace transforms fear into hope. I'm reminded that there is no such thing as a hopeless situation. There are only hopeless people. God can redeem 
can redeem any situation that life throws at us. And we know that life can be pretty mean and unfair at times. And when life seems to be out of control, we all need encouragement. We need to hear that we are not alone and we're not forgotten. That's God cares. Now in Matthew's Gospel, it tells the story of an angel speaking to Joseph about his role in the Christmas story. And we also learn of angels coming down upon the shepherds. I guess the shepherds were probably more startled than afraid. But hearing the announcement, their fear was quickly transformed into joy as they experienced Christ for the first time. That's what the good news of God's salvation does for us. It transforms fear into joy. So, we've got grace, encouragement and salvation. Those were the announcements of the angels for the first Christmas. Do we wonder why we don't see angels anymore? Who says we don't? What if we, you, were to become an instrument that God has chosen to share grace, encouragement and salvation? Can you think of an angel in your life? I have several special people who at the most unexpected time have offered me grace and encouragement and none of them have wings. Ordinary people like you and I. But what a blessing it would be if someone regarded you as an angel. I really don't see myself as an angel. I'm not aerodynamically designed well enough. But in amongst all the Christmas story, give some thought for the angels. Through grace, they bring hope. And it is in hope that we can face the future with confidence. So as Jason would say to his football team, go angels. Amen. Now earlier in prayer we gave thanks and praise, so it must is also a must that we take time to our confessions for God. So let's come together in prayer again. Dear God, in the craziness of the pre-Christmas season, we lose sight of its significance amid the rush to please others. We focus on gift giving rather than your giving. We focus on carols and parties and feasts and forget the meaning of Jesus' incarnation, his life, teaching, death and resurrection. We guard our time so jealously we pass by the needy, ignoring your call to love the least, to reach the lost, to support works of justice and to declare your gospel. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive the mayhem we create, our selfishness and blindness, and reveal your higher purposes day by day, minute by minute. For the sake of Christ, we pray. Amen. Please join with me in saying our words of assurance this morning. Mary's song is full of grace and reassurance. God's promise of mercy is for all and for all ways. We are bound into this mercy, for which we say, thanks be to God. Our next song, which we can stay seated for, is Come, Thou Long Expected Jesus.
know, God has given us so much, in fact, all we have. May we, with grateful hearts, give back some of our wealth to the work of God's church through our free will offering. Let's come together in prayer for the offering. Small as we are in the scope of eternity, small as our offering is in the face of the needs of our world, in your hands all becomes a miracle of life and peace. Receive these our gifts, we pray. Amen. As Dave receives the offering, we also have received from Caboolture Community Action a certificate awarded to Pastor Dave for the recognition of his generosity and the continued support to vulnerable community members. It says, it's people like you who make it possible. It doesn't actually mention the word angels. And there's also a certificate for the whole church congregations too. Thank you. Thank you very much. We come now to our time of prayers of the people. Let's pray. Merciful God, from of old your prophets dreamed of the day of the Lord, a day when nations might dwell in peace and every soul may flourish. We join all those who have prayed for peace lifting up the plight of nations, praying for leaders to embrace truth and justice, longing for your reign of love, love to be realised everywhere. So loving God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And gracious God, as we stand here on the eve of Christmas, we are mindful of the inequality that exists in every community, city and country. We pray that people will have food to eat, shelter and care, celebrations that bring joy and a real awareness of your saving grace. Spirit of life, we know that we are peop there are people here amongst us and within our wider circle whom we know are in need of your blessing. In silence, we name them now. We do not name them because they are more special or deserving than others, but because you call us to pray for their wholeness and you've placed them upon our hearts and lips. May they know your presence, your healing touch and be strengthened in their faith. In this season of madness and season of gladness, call us to prayer and to cling closely to your presence in the name of Jesus, the bringer of love. Amen. Thank you. We're now going to sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Yeah. 
Jude 1, 26 to 28, 38. Um, it's the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with a child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is now going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks thanks be to, God. to God. I've titled the sermon this morning, In God, Anything is Possible. So may my understanding of your word, Lord, be acceptable to you and touch the hearts of this congregation. Amen. I want you to think for a moment of a time when very unexpectedly you were singled out for something you didn't expect or necessarily want. Like those hypnotists of the 1950s who would call out people from an audience and have them perform some acts that were very much out of character. And even today, having your name called out in a raffle win sends a shudder of pleasure and surprise through your body. On my office wall at home, there are about a dozen awards for community service, humanitarian work, plaques and appreciation. Now four of them cost the donors a total of $12,000. Not for me, but for medical research foundations. What I have done was not to seek reward, but to serve. And much more than the medal, plaque or certificate, the accolades, when they're presented, the thing that touched me was the peer recognition. And this year marks 50 years of community service for me. But I'm not done just yet. It's no small thing to be shown favour especially when you don't think you deserve it. Imagine how Mary must have felt to be told that she had found favour with God. Just prior to today's verses, the Bible tells of Mary's aunt Elizabeth, much older and childless, but now pregnant with John the Baptist. And I quote Elizabeth's painful but glorious words. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favourably on me and took away a disgrace I endured among my people. Now the impossibility of Elizabeth's pregnancy at such an old age, age demands that we hear Mary's story as equally incredulous. The angel's pronouncement that nothing is impossible for God finds its deepest meaning in that impossibility abounds. That a barren elderly woman is pregnant and a young teenage girl from a nothing town 
is favoured. I think today we have trivialised the word miracle. When you see a news item that uses the word to describe someone surviving a major car crash considering the mangled wreck, I often think, no, that's not a miracle. I just don't think God was ready for them yet. But it doesn't make any sense to say it was impossible for him to survive, but he did. Impossible is the opposite of possible, isn't it? The word miracle, however, does carry a little hint that a greater power than man's comprehension is at play here. And is there, is there in that hint something we see as a seed of faith? You know, we think we are the greatest thing since sliced bread, as the saying goes. And to think that there is a greater power to play is very challenging to many people. But friends, our faith tells us that in God, anything is possible. There's a deep theological revelation in these three verses from Luke that outline three things. One, Mary goes from being a peasant girl to a prophet. Two, Mary goes from being Mary to mother of God. And thirdly, Mary goes from denial to discipleship. It sounds fairly straightforward, but those three movements are mighty, in powerful, are mighty powerful in actions. So what does that say to us here today, now? What does Mary's story ask us to do? One, move from who we think we are to what God has called us to be. Two, to move us from being an observant believer to becoming a confessing disciple. And three, Mary's story asks us to believe what may seem impossible, to acknowledge the very transformation of God. Now in my sermons I often ask questions to reflect on a matter and today is no different. On this Christmas week, the last Sunday of Advent of preparation, I want you to ask yourself, what do you think God is calling you to be and are you measuring up? Just take a minute to think and pray. What does God want me to be and how do I measure up? Secondly, you sit here or at home as an observant believer. What have you got to do to become a confessing disciple? So let's think and pray on that. What have you got to do to become a confessing disciple? Now, I want you to ask yourself, does my faith allow me to accept that God sent to this earth part of himself happened to save us, to save you, to save me? It's no small journey to go from our comfortable preconceptions of God the Father to God in a manger, vulnerable, helpless, dependent and yet that's the promise of Christmas. I invite you to return to your church on Friday morning at 8am to celebrate the seemingly impossible. If, if in God anything was possible, imagine the hope that that could bring you. 
the hope it could bring to your family or could bring to our community. If, if in God anything is possible, imagine what joy that could bring to you. Could bring to your family or your community. And if, if in God anything is impossible, imagine what peace that could bring to you. What peace it could bring to your family. What it could bring to the community. And finally, finally, if, if in God anything is, imposs- is, is possible, imagine the love that you could receive and be able to give. How the love of your family could look. How the love of your community could be so more caring and just. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I sincerely pray that the blessings Christmas has to offer are accepted by you. Amen. There's a hymn which sums up much of what I've said. As we stand to sing and stay standing for the commissioning and benediction, let earth and heaven combine. together the commissioning. Mary calls us to believe that all things are possible in God. Take this call and let it dwell in your hearts. For the Christ child is come and peace, hope, love and joy is flowing onto the earth. May the Spirit's guidance light our path and may Christ's saving grace be in our hearts and may the eternal God dwell in our homes and every community with peace and love. Amen. Our blessing song today to end Advent, O come all ye faithful, first verse and chorus only.